So I'm going to do a quick review on my new camcorder that I've got here, and this is the Flip Mino HD, and this is the 4GB version of the camera. So what I'll do is I'll quickly take it out of the box, go over some of the camera's features, and then get straight into some video footage that I've shot using this camera. After that I'll do like a conclusion on what I think of the camera. So just pop the, the box open here, and you've got another box inside that one. You can see it's like a nice quality matte finish in this, really good quality the logo and whatnot there, pop that open and you get your camera inside. Uh, this one is the mirror finished version, you can also get it in piano black I think. This is the only one they had in the, the store when I went to buy it, so don't really like the mirror finish but there's not much you can do about that. So I've got the, the manuals and stuff in there and then under that you've got a wee baggie and kind of cloth baggy so you can put your camera in that and clean it at the same time. Also comes with a, a wrist strap and you also get AV cables as well so you can hook it up to your TV. So moving on to the camera here and I'll take this off. You can see it's a really really small compact design. It's nice and light it's about the same size as your typical phone, really easy to keep in your pocket. And on the front here you've got your, your fixed lens and the camera records in 720p. You've also got a microphone and there's an LED behind there as well that will go red when you're, you're actually filming. On the side you've got, because it's a flip video camera, pull that and your USB socket pops out, which is handy. On the other side here you've got your power switch and on the back you've got a small LCD screen so you can view your footage and you can also use it as a, a viewfinder. You've got speakers, there's holes for speakers either side of the, the screen there and on the back you've got touch sensitive controls. So you've got your play, your delete, your positive and minus and your left and right. These can control like your, your zoom. The camera has like a two time digital zoom. So you can control that or you can use that to browse your menu. You've also got on the back here a big red button and all that does, you press that and it will record. Press again and it will stop recording. Really, really simple, easy to use. Again, you've got a nice shiny kind of piano black finish on that there. And that's the camera. So I'll get straight into showing you some video footage that I recorded with this the other day. So to give you an idea of the camera's performance when filming in good outdoor conditions, I'm here at a local wind farm. And as you can see it's a nice bright sunny day. Perfect conditions for, for filming. And if I just pan up here, I'll give you an idea of the quality of the, the camera films in. Get the turbine blades up there. The jet passing overhead. And if I just come around here. Sorry about any wind noise in the, the microphone, there's not a lot I can do about that. There's no image stabilisation with this camera, so you need to move quite steady with it. But it does pick out a lot of detail. Let me show you that there. Come over here. Let's give you an idea of the, the detail the camera will pick up. But overall, it does a really, really good job of filming really really nice quality
So to give you an idea of the camera's performance when filming indoors where lighting conditions might not be that great, I'm here in my bathroom, and the bathroom in my house is probably the darkest room in the house, so it's a good place to test this out. I've also shut the blind here as well, just to make it as dark as possible. So the conditions in this room are probably about as a wee bit below what you'd usually expect to be filming in if you were filming indoors normally. So if we just pan round here, this dark corner in the bathroom, you'll see that the, the camera does a good job of compensating for the, the poor lighting conditions in here. The image on the screen actually looks a lot brighter than it is in real life, so I mean this corner is really really dark in real life here. You might notice that the picture quality does degrade slightly, but overall it still does a good job of picking out detail. And personally I'm quite impressed with the, the performance of the camera in low lighting conditions like this. So the camera does have a 2 times digital zoom and I'll demonstrate that for you in just a minute. Right now I'm about a metre and a half away from the objects in front of me. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in halfway. And that's about halfway there. Zoom in full. And that's maximum zoom there. They look like they're in focus on screen but I'm guessing they're probably a wee bit blurry. So if I just zoom out again, and that's back to normal. And the camera doesn't have any autofocus and there's no macro feature, so I'll show you where the, the camera starts to lose focus. Again, I'm about a metre and a half away from the, the items in front of me. I think they start to lose focus after you get any closer than about a metre, so I'll just demonstrate that for you now. I'm moving slowly. So that's about a metre away from the the items and they look like they're in focus on screen moving halfway again they're probably about half a meter now again they still look like they're in focus on the screen but they're probably starting to get a wee bit blurry and if I move down to about 10 inches away from the, the items you can actually start to see that they're a bit blurry through the viewfinder And if I move back out again, there I'm about a metre away. And all the way out. So overall, I'm really impressed with the camera and I'd probably recommend it. It's got its good and its bad points. Some of the good points being it's nice and lightweight, very small, compact. Uh, you throw it in your pocket, not need to worry about taking any carry case or anything for it. Uh, really high build quality very easy to use it's only got the one button on the back really for recording and stop so that's nice I mean you've got the USB built in so you just plug it straight into your laptop the sound quality on this is really really good and really impressed with it it's much better than the, the camera I'm using right now you probably notice that if you uh, go from the beginning of this video to the middle to the end now you'll notice that there's a difference in sound quality. The sound quality in the flip is really, really good. Really impressed with that. Its ability to film in low light conditions is really good as well. I'm really happy with that. Um, it's the kind of thing you probably want to... You, it'd be good, I think, for taking to like a... If you're on like a... Going to a concert or something like that, you probably take this along with you and probably still get a pretty good uh, picture from it. Um, some of the bad points are like the lights of the, the mirror finish. You can see it's picking up all kinds of fingerprints there. I didn't really have a choice when I bought mine. They only had the, the mirror finished one and I think the only other option was at the time was a, a bl piano black finish. I think you can get them now in a, a matte silver finish so if you could get that I'd probably recommend that over the, the shiny one. It's only got 4 gigabyte memory and you can't like add any memory to it, there's no SD card slot or anything. So you are limited to 
an hour of filming with this one. You can get it an 8 gigabyte version, and that's two hours you can film with. But that's the only limiting thing with it. It does film in MP4 format, which is a wee bit of a pain for me because I use Windows Media Player or Windows Movie Maker even to uh, edit my video. So what I need to do is convert it over to .avi file. It takes two seconds. There is software you can use for that, but it's just a bit of a, an inconvenience. Um, there's no macro feature on the camera, which is probably the biggest thing for me. I like to be able to get up nice and close to to items and uh, film them but with this you can't do that I mean the closest you can get is about a meter away from an, an object before it starts to go out of focus so if you want to do if you want to buy this just to do reviews and stuff on on a uh, YouTube then it's probably not the best camera for that um, other than that I mean the small screen in the back it's difficult to tell when something's in focus and when something's not in focus but, I mean, that's the kind of trade-off you pay if you want something as compact as this. I mean, it's tiny. It fits in the palm of my hand. So, yeah, overall, really happy with the camera. I'd probably recommend it. They currently retail for around £100. Um, I paid 40 for mine. I got it on a special offer. So, I mean, if you can get it any cheaper than 100 I'd say it's worth picking up. But, yeah, that's my review of the Flip Minnow HD. Thanks for watching.